Hey, Piro. So, um, thanks for the response. And, uh, you know, you're right. Philosophy is an ancient exercise. And, you know, all of us are just regurgitating uh, arguments that have been made for thousands of years. Um, you know, I'm ending up sounding more like a Platonist. You're um, a skeptic. And um, we're reenacting, you know, the same scenes um, from some of uh, Plato's dialogues. But, you know, I'm not trying to preserve a notion of metaphysical truth that is based on the correspondence theory of, um, of truth. Uh, I reject that model for how the mind comes to know the world. Um, truth is not a dualistic relationship between a representation, a mental representation, and an object in the external world. Um, for me, metaphysically speaking, I wouldn't set up um, the nature of our experience in, in that way. Um, I would say that the mind, what we call the mind, what is really our experience, as, you know, um, living bodies in a world, uh, it's, it's, mind is related to the world, not in terms of some internal substance inside of an external substance that surrounds it. Um, our mind permeates the world. Um, it's not contained in our brain or even in our skin. Um, thinking is something that we do with the world. You know, just like we learn to count with our fingers, we learn to think in large part by um, learning to speak and learning to write and learning to talk with one another. Um, that's how we come to have ideas. Um, but now, what, I'm, what I wouldn't want to say is that ideas are created by language. I think ideas um, are, are something we want to express through language, and the language itself never really contains the ideas. Um, you know, just to, to make it clear why I think metaphysics are important, if we're going to define um, if we're going to describe how the mind relates to the world or how knowledge is possible, we have to establish, um, you know, first of all, what mind is and what the world is. Um, and until we've done that, we can talk about empiricism all day, but we've had, we have no philosophical foundation for why it should tell us anything at all, factual because we don't know what's knowing anything and we don't know what is being known. We just assume that this process of collecting facts can go on. Um, and, you know, scientists do go on collecting facts. So, it, you know, facts can be collected with just empiricism and no philosophical, metaphysical background or, uh, you know, baggage, you could call it. But I would argue that the facts have no meaning because the scientist that continually collects, you know, these very technical, mathematical um, descriptions of the world doesn't know how to, or uh, doesn't know how to ground them in the world that they actually experience. They don't know the meaning of them. You know, quantum physics is the perfect example of this. Um, we have the mathematical um, predictions that work perfectly but we have no idea what, what they mean um, at the level of, you know, human interaction. Um, we cannot translate the quantum um, concepts into our middle world concepts. So that's a failure of science, in, in, in my mind. We need to, for science to be useful to us, interpret it meaningfully for our experience, and, and I think we need more than uh, mere empiricism for that, because, you know, unless we radicalize empiricism, by which I mean 
we don't just pay attention to the so-called external world and our sensory experience of that external world, but we recognize how experience also includes things like qualities and values and ideas and archetypes um, and, you know, numinous presences. And experience is, in fact, vast and far greater than merely sensory experience. Um, and to my mind, uh, experience is so vast that the sensory sphere um, should not, you know, and what we experience in the sensory sphere, like, you know, what we call inert objective matter, we should not think that everything, all of the rest of our experience, can somehow be reduced to what is experienced in the sensory realm. Um, that would be a mistake in, in my opinion. Um, it would be premature to do that because we, we know so little uh, about how deep experience goes. Um, we, we know very little about, at least scientifically, publicly, about um, the possibilities for um, you know, exploring consciousness and experience. Esoterically and you know, um, privately among various traditions, many traditions throughout uh, human history, there have been techniques and methods that have been developed that do seem to provide um, a way into these deeper um, levels or realms of experience but they haven't yet been um, systematically developed on, you know, a, a scientific level in the sense that they are, you know, if not objective, at least intersubjectively valid. Um, maybe they have been validated within small communities, but they need to be democratized in a way before we can really come to have knowledge of, you know, what kind of world we live in ultimately so you know I guess maybe the reason I want to preserve metaphysics this is what it really comes down to is that I'm not simply a materialist I, I think that um, you know in preserving metaphysics allows me to argue why we should not um, assume that everything has a material origin um, because you know there are other possibilities and I think quantum physics and um, you know, the Big Bang uh, theory have sort of shown that there is an immaterial origin, uh, that matter has an immaterial origin. And so, you know, at that point, what is, what is matter at that point? Um, this is not at all a closed question. So I preserve a place for metaphysics because we still have to ask these kinds of questions. Empirical science has provided us with a lot of empirical facts, but in order to make any conclusions about what those facts mean, we still need metaphysics. And so, yeah, um, I'll leave it there. Thanks for uh, listening, and um, it's definitely been an enjoyable discussion. I, I think uh, it's going better than uh, you and uh, Lord of Malaysia's discussion, at least. So we've got that going for us. Take it easy.